The Russian space industry is deeply troubled and to a great extent running on the fumes of its past and very real glory. What is notable is that a major Russian media outlet has published such a revelation for a domestic audience, warning of the Russian space program's rapid collapse, and that the space program is rotting from within. All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Russia's space program is increasingly seeking to project its greatness in space through symbolic acts rather than technological achievements, such as the launch of a Russian movie star, sending a robot nicknamed Fedor to space, or making entirely hollow promises about a moon landing in 2030. But now it has been called out on these acts in a publication closely aligned with the Russian government. This 2,800 word article was written by Dmitry Popov, who has earned numerous official expressions of thanks, recognitions, and awards from the Russian government and recently received a commemorative dagger from Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu. The article begins with the declaration that Russia's space program has a shortage of competent and highly qualified staff, obsolete fact facilities, and technology with systemic leadership weakness. Russian space companies are delinquent on promised deliveries for hundreds of contracts. For example, the Kronichev Center agreed to deliver 10 booster cores for the Angara A5 rocket five years ago. The first five cores were delivered only in March of this year, and the other five are yet to be completed. And why is this? Because Roscosmos is exercising, shall we say, not so strict control over execution of defense contracts by its daughter companies. In March of 2020, Dmitry Olegovich Rogozin approved the relevant procedural regulations to exercise control over execution of defense ministry contracts by subordinate organizations of the state corporation. However, an audit showed that his subordinates are in no hurry to comply with procedures. Where appropriate controls are insufficient, fraud and abuse are inevitable. As regards relations with the leaders of daughter companies of Roscosmos, since 2019 over 60 criminal investigations have been initiated on the companies and their contracts, with total losses assessed at more than 5 billion rubles, or 67.7 million dollars US. Roscosmos is even struggling to build its mainstay vehicles, the Soyuz rockets and Progress spacecraft. Considering a recent docking issue with the Progress vehicle, which carries supplies to the Russian segment of the ISS, they launched the Progress MS-16 cargo spacecraft in mid-February of this year. However, it was unable to dock automatically and had to be docked under manual control due to damage to the Kurs NA system. It was damaged because the fairing delimited during launch. It turned out that the epoxy used in its manufacturing was not checked to see if it was within specifications. The contractor for the glue, Chemex Limited joint stock company, lacks the technological means to produce its own product, meaning they purchased the product from another vendor and for the samples already used, documentation affirming its conforming with specifications and its origin were never submitted. That is, when and where the epoxy was purchased is unknown. The most interesting part, similar damage to the Kurs NA system has been noted previously on the launches of Progress ships MS-13, 14, and 15. Popov further expressed concern about reliance on Germany to help fuel the Soyuz rockets and the Soyuz spacecraft that launches humans. The issue is that vernier thrusters on the Soyuz boosters and in the deorbit engines of the Soyuz MS spacecraft use a special grade of highly refined hydrogen peroxide. Production of this hydrogen peroxide in Russia, however, depends on deliveries of chemicals produced by a German company called Ivonic Resource Efficiency GmbH. These deliveries are subject to limitation by international sanctions against the Russian Federation. Thus, as Popov wrote, the West can stop Russian space launches with a single keystroke. The article also discusses the Vostochny Cosmodrome, a spaceport in eastern Russia that has been a priority for President Vladimir Putin. However, this project under Ragazin's stewardship has been beset by construction delays and corruption, such as embezzlement. 
Of the nearly 1,200 structures planned for construction at the spaceport, only about 200 have been completed. Construction has yet to begin on more than 40% of them. Already, the planned launch of Angara A5 rockets from Vostochny has been delayed from 2021 to 2023 as criminal investigations continue. And if what I've said previously is any indicator, then everything is going pretty swell with Russia's moon program. Roscosmos ordered work to create a next-generation crewed spacecraft for flights to low Earth orbit and to deep space, including the moon, in 2009. This program requires the development of the Oriole, or Eagle. However, building the crewed Oriole spacecraft is at the stage of making mock-ups and test articles, conducting experimental tests on half-scale models. So, Russia's crewed moon program is not yet developed. Popov also criticizes Rogazin for overpromising on Russian launch efficiency and under-delivering. For example, Roscosmos said there would be 44 space launches in 2019, and 25 were conducted. In 2020, 40 launches were planned, and just 17 were conducted. This year, Russia has conducted fewer than half of its planned 47 launches. Roscosmos, therefore, has decided to no longer publish its planned number of launches. The overall portrait Popov paints of Roscosmos is that of a wasteful, increasingly decrepit enterprise, where almost no money is being invested into the present or future. Instead, the focus seems to be providing high-paying jobs for a handful of technocrats, whose salaries are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Meanwhile, the average monthly wage for technical specialists who build the country's rockets and spacecraft range from $500 to $1,000 US a month. As a result, hundreds of billions, if not trillions, of rubles fly away into space, but fecklessly and pointlessly disappear down the drain. All these beautiful PR presentations of art-decorated rockets and wild promises are still little more than cover for the rapid collapse of Russia's space industry. The sprawling Russian space corporation has already faced significant budget cuts in recent years, as it has lost funding from the US for Soyuz seat purchases because of the SpaceX Crew Dragon's readiness, and the fact that there have been no further RD-180 engine purchases. If nothing changes, most likely, space will remain Russian only in our memories. And that concludes our episode for today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you thought about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. That said, if you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up. And as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. I, I actually just don't care about hope or enthusiasm, motivation. I just give it, give it everything I've got. Um, let me put it this way. If you need inspiring words, don't do it.